Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope everybody has their coffee ready or tea. I got mine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the purpose of the coffee chat is to give you an update of what's going on at DBCR and uh, for the members of the community, also to update you on the students. But we also want to uh, hear you, you what's going on uh, with you. Um, so just a couple of uh, guides for you. We're going to put everyone on mute for right now. Um, any questions that you may have, we will, um, we have a chat box uh, that you can just ask any questions or you can just ask uh, questions as we go along. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is just start off with a prayer like we usually do. And we have one of our promising juniors, Giselle, who works at Deloitte LLC, who's going to lead us in prayer. So Giselle, can you lead us in prayer, please? Sure. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Loving God, your desire is for our wholeness and well-being. We hold in tenderness and pray the collective of our world at this time. We grieve precious lives lost and vulnerable lives lost and neighbors for an uncertain future. We pray new lives go viral. Pray our leaders to discern and choose wisely, aligned with the common good. Help us to practice social distancing and reveal to us new and creative ways to come together in spirit and soul. Call us to profound trust in your faithful presence, you, the God who does not abandon. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Um, also, want to send out prayers to our frontline workers and essential workers for keeping us safe during this um, unprecedented time. Um, Giselle, before you go, can I just ask you, how are you doing during this time? How has life been? since you transitioned to online learning and working? Um, I've been doing well. It was difficult at first because I, well, none of us are used to it, but I've started getting used to it now. Mm -hmm. And updating us. Thank you so much. Of course. So, Bye, Giselle. Bye, so, Giselle. Thank you. Keep up the hard work. Yeah. Thank you. So I wanted to do a quick intro to our CWSP team. Um, we have Enrique Guzman, who's our DC placement specialist. Um, we have uh, Tanya Argueta, who is our Maryland placement specialist. Uh, Rebecca Terravella, who is our Virginia placement specialist and nonprofit. Um, we have Marissa Shuford, who is our tra training specialist. And we also have Marina Jerry, who is our CWSP program assistant. And we also have our VP of organizational growth, Anna Chapa. Um, and myself, Jalen Hurt, is the corporate work study program manager. Um, you know, just to start out, um, it's been a historic year, uh, <laughs> lots of changes um, that we had to get used to. Um, we stopped and uh, physically being in the building March 13th and we quickly transitioned to online learning and teleworking uh, March 16th. And um, it was a rocky road, but uh, with our teachers and our staff, we never missed a beat. Um, the first couple of weeks was a learning curve and we offered computers and the internet service to any students that was in need and our IT department continues to support the tech needs of our students. Um, for the corporate work study program, uh, students transitioned into teleworking, um, building skills for the workplace. Um, the students have been learning versatility and how to adapt to needs in the workplace. Students have been focused on email etiquette, Microsoft Word, Excel projects, um, time manage management to add value uh, to the jobs in the workplace. And our goal is focusing on skills needed for our new virtual reality. Um, and it is, it's been, like we said, it's just been a challenge and we've been doing everything that we can, but our students have really 
um, they, they, it's a new reality for them and they have been doing the best that they can um, during this time. Um, you know, how are the students during, during, during this transition? It's been hard. Um, as with everyone trying to get a new sense of normalcy, students are juggling school, work and family. Some of our students have had the virus and recovered. Um, some have had family members that have the virus and, you know, it's hard being in the house with someone with the virus and they're just trying to, you know, grasp reality and see, you know, what can they do and they have so many things that's coming at them and this is their new normal. Um, and it's just hard. Um, we have students that had parents laid off and some of the students are the only ones working in the household. Um, and students are taking care of younger siblings and sometimes fighting for screen time for this schoolwork has been hard. And if I can speak very honestly, um, our seniors are feeling it the most. Um, you know, they're frustrated and they're scared with the current situation. They wanna have their senior year activities and it's a scary point at, right now because things are so uncertain. Um, the school started a plan of action for students and families as well as for staff. And we're reaching out to families uh, to see what support we can put out in place um, and what's needed in this time of need. Um, we also, also have our campus ministry, our student life and our counseling departments which have gone digitally. But, you know, we're always there and we're trying to help our students out. Um, the Crystal Ray Network, we meet weekly to see how we can support our families across the nation. Um, and, the, and we're discussing on how academics and the corporate work study program is going to look like in the future. And we're constantly meeting to set contingency plans in place to see what's next year going to look like because, you know, and all honestly, we, we just don't know. A um, couple of updates and uh, dates for you. For seniors, their last day is going to be May 20th. Um, and for our underclassmen, it's going to be June 5th. Um, and that's pending ADW um, final decision. Um, again, everything is so up in the air. Um, you know, um, we're not gonna have traditional celebrations, but we are gonna find ways to celebrate our students. Um, for right now, a couple of dates that we can invite you to. Uh, May 5th is our college signing day for our seniors, and I'll send out the link for that. Um, May 28th is not a graduation, but it is a, a celebration of our students. Um, and we'll send out a link to that. As far as graduation, we are going to do something pending CDC uh, guidelines. Um, we're looking into July. You know, again, it's just everything's up in the air uh, with that. Um, also, I know a couple of students have badges or key cards, and we can discuss through how they can get that back to you as well. Um, you know, and that's just, at this point, we just wanted to give you some updates of what's going on. Um, right now, I would love to hear from you. I'm going to give, um, let Anna uh, take over this portion as we go into what does 2021 look like for us. You're on beat. There we go. Um, first, I would just like to say again, thank you so much for your dedication to our students, for your dedication to our program. Um, it is, let me see here just a second. There we go. Um, our dedication to our students and our program has just been incredible. Um, our students, comment frequently that they miss their friends, they miss, you know, the, the typical um, ebb and flow of, of their social life, but they really miss you guys. They, um, 
their work days and going to work and being with their coworkers is just a, a connection that they um, that they really miss and, and appreciate. Um, so I know many of you have reached out to them. I would encourage you to continue reaching out to them. Um, and if you don't hear back, let us know and we will um, we'll work to try to get a hold of them. As Lynn said, um, we're working hard to keep in touch with all of our students. When we don't hear back from them, we um, kindly, gently stalk them. Um, if for no other reason than out of care and concern, we want to make sure that the reasons we aren't hearing from them, um, you know, are are not due to real um, real emergencies for them or for their families. Um, I have been just overwhelmed by the community's support in um, in stepping up and helping us with a specific student um, student and family support fund that we've started to make sure that we're able to give you know food gift cards to people and waive people's tuition and um, you know help in other kind of resources. So um, you know we're all trying to meet the students needs and make sure that they stay focused on you know to and through college as best as as best as they can um so in terms of moving ahead for kind of the end of this year and next year um we are planning just like i know all of you are kind of scenario a b and c um scenario a definitely being that um, we will be able to open up school business as usual in late August. Um, and you know that obviously is our most hopeful outlook. Um, option C, kind of the, the least favorable option would be that we would be having to do a lot more from home in the fall. So whether that is you know, continuing online instruction um, completely or going to school in some type of um, part-time fashion and doing more things here at home. Um, so, you know, all of those, just like I know, particularly Merced and our university partners are really kind of thinking through that at the university level as well, you know, just trying to make sure that we are um, keeping safety as the number one, um, you know, the number one guidance and then also making sure that our students stay um, continue with their learning. We know our students tend to come to us academically uh, grade or two behind and this is only going to exacerbate that. So we want to make sure that they that they keep learning. Um, but I do know that many of your organizations are also having the same conversations and trying to really take a look at what next year is is going to look like so for us i will say that um the, through the remainder of this school year we will remain home we will have a um, day when students can come up to school clean out their locker drop off their textbooks and all of those kinds of things so if your student workers have fobs or badges or things that you need collected, um, please communicate with your um, account manager, your placement specialist for how you need to receive that. We will be getting that from the students and can mail it to your home, mail it to your office. Um, if you want us to just hold on to it until the, the fall, we can do that as well. Um, then in terms of next year, there are a couple of, of different things that I think are important for you to note. We will be sending out our renewal notices in mid-May. I know they traditionally go out mid-March, um, but mid-March was when we all headed home and we just didn't think that that was um, an appropriate time to send, um, to send that notice. Uh, hopefully people are able to make a slightly better informed decision um, in mid-May. But please understand that that renewal notice is, um, 
it's a, an agreement and a conversation starter. So if you are able to renew with us business as usual and um, you know, expect that students can go ahead and come back in live next year, that's great. If you need to have a conversation with us around what a telework option might look like or what maybe a deferred start would look like, or maybe you're ready for the students to go ahead and start working in the fall, but you might need a few months before you start paying on that. Please know that these renewals are definitely a conversation. Our first priority is um, to continue working with you. The students uh, gain so much value through our relationship with you that that's really um, at the front of front end of this um, renewal agreement. You know, if for some reason, whether it's financial or logistics or whatever, you just are not able to commit to working with Don Bosco Cristo Ray this year, you know, please let us know if this is something that we can revisit either in January or perhaps next, next fall. Because, you know, we know everyone's going through a whole lot, we will not be changing our rates from this year to next year. So we had originally thought, you know, we would continue with our one and a half to 2% rate increase that we do every year. This year, we will not be doing that. So we will be staying at the same cost as, as this year. And again, if we need to have a conversation around that, we're, we're open to doing that. Um, we are also working hard, as Lynn said, over these months to expose our students to a lot of different telework options. So our students have become very well versed in a, a wide variety, whether it's Microsoft Teams or Zoom or WebEx or whatever to, to um, work on those telework skills. So if that's something that your organization may need in the fall, we hope that the students are going to be um, more, um, more equipped and frankly, well rehearsed at, at working from home or working from school or whatever the option may be. The other piece then is, um, is for our freshmen. We know that um, sending our freshmen to work is very important, that they learn a lot, that they grow a lot during, during that freshman year. But the reality of it is, we are very concerned about our ability to train them to be prepared for what could be an abnormal work setting next year, to say the least. So we have made the decision that for this upcoming school year, we are going to keep the freshmen back on our campus and invest in their professional development training all year long. So that in the 2021 school year, um, those students will be, you know, really trained in all of the normal workforce development skills, but even more trained in teleworking, in Excel, in Microsoft Office suite um, pieces. So um, we will be sending our sophomores, juniors, and seniors to work, and, and you can be guaranteed that all of the students you receive or all of the students placed with you will have had at least that one year of work experience. And that's obviously taking some scheduling arrangements. Those of you who are used to one student per grade level every day of the week, we're accommodating that to make sure that there are students who can go all to fill that full full work week. Um, but we just feel, you know, we really want to make sure that we send the best students out to you really well prepared and that also we, we set the freshmen up for success. And so we're making sure that we keep them home um, to, to ensure that they are well trained. Um, I think, Lynn, uh, Lynn, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think those are the real kind of major updates that we wanted to, um, to cue you in on. Um, the other pieces are just, you know, just to reiterate to you, our students really, really miss you. 
And, um, you know, we hope that you can celebrate with us virtually college signing day at 10 o'clock on May 5th. That's next Tuesday. And um, we will be having a virtual baccalaureate mass on May 27th. And we will be doing a virtual senior celebration. I'm not ready to call it a graduation, but a senior celebration on May 28th. And then we will be doing a graduation um, at a later date. With that, you know, I turn it over to you all. We really want to just hear how are things going with you? How are things going in your office spaces? Um, and, you know, what is your, how, what are ways that we can help to support you? Um, you know, reach out to your colleagues or, or any of those things. So just go ahead and feel free to unmute yourself and um, respond in any way. Thank you. So Anna, I actually have a follow-up question to your updates. Um, sure. At the university, we haven't quite decided about the fall semester. Um, sure. You know, in a perfect world, we'd go back, but there might be a hybrid. So for high school seniors who don't know what the status is for their college in the fall, um, what are you hearing from them? How are you guys kind of helping them and kind of what's, how are they feeling? Um, I think to, to reiterate Ms. Hurt's point, they're, they're really struggling. And so we're really trying to um, support them in every way possible, pray for them. Um, our college counselors are meeting with them as a group once a week but then they're also reaching out to them one-on-one -on -one to have conversations precisely about that. Um, okay, you have committed to Y University. What does that, financially, is that still realistic given that, you know, mom maybe lost job or dad lost his job? Um, it, are you really ready to go to you know, X university that's pretty far away, given what could be happening. So we're really trying to kind of scenario plan with our students. We do predict, um, and this is a national trend, um, we do predict that more of our students will be opting to enroll in online universities than normally. Um, we very rarely, um, very rarely have students commit to, you know, the, the, traditional full online universities. We have a couple that are that are looking into that. We also have more students um, opting to um, enroll in a community college and defer their enrollment at, you know, the other traditional four year university. Um, I think the sense is if I'm going to go online, I can I can do that through a community college and then transition over and that way I can support my family um in a in other ways but the vast majority of our students were said are are still going with best case scenario they really they've worked hard and they really want to go to um to those to those universities and so they're kind of waiting like all of us with bated breath to find out if and when they can they can do that we also know um the financial aid situation is constantly changing at the university level too um, we are going to have our college signing day, not tomorrow, May 1st, as we normally do. Um, we wanted to give the students a little bit more time. Um, but we know that even the May 5th decision is, um, is their best guess at this time. And, and some of those college decisions may change. And then just an update on my end is from like the university standpoint. Um, a couple of the scenarios that we're looking at are one, do we just delay the fall opening in place, you know, so some some universities are looking at that if you delay far enough. Um, there's there's a date in September by which if, if we open that late, it should be fine. Um, or just kind of other universities have said already said we're just going to go online in fall and then bring students back in the spring. And then other people, and we're looking at the possibility of something hybrid. Um, but it's it's another another thing is um, our provost is on a on a on a weekly call with other universities. And June 
June is kind June first is is our deadline for establishing the framework by which to make a decision about the fall. And so we know there's a lot of anxiety with students um, about just kind of what the operating status is. Um, but we we, we, we don't know so, but June, a lot of universities are aiming to just sort of have at least a framework for making that decision so that students can know and, and have some kind of update on that end. Um, and then we, and, um, and as far as kind of from a work perspective, um, I'll continue to update Rebecca and you guys about what, what our office will do for the fall. And just the last thing I wanted to add is to the extent that you might want to host like um, Zoom workshops with your freshman students, you know, just as even though they can't be out in the workplace to the extent that we can be helpful in putting together a workshop to give them some contact time with employers, um, we'd be happy to sort of um, think through that too. So Merced, that would be wonderful. Thank you so much. And we'll definitely um, take you up on that opportunity. I can go next. Um, my name is Lorraine. I'm from the Association of Catholic Colleges and Universities. Um, we miss Ricky. He he's, was fabulous in the office. Um, but I'll echo what Merced has uh, said about the um, unknowns. Uh, our president here, uh, Father Dennis Holschneider, he has been um, in touch with our 195 uh, presidents, our member, our member presidents, and they're all, uh, it's a day by day thing. They're all really working it through and it's, um, they have to go by what their individual governors are recommending. Uh, the science is, is evolving as we learn more about the virus. Um, so yes, I agree with what Merced said. They're, the presidents are trying to come forward with some kind of messaging, but even those can change. Um, so it's, it's a day by day thing. Um, I do have a question though. Um, uh, Anna, you mentioned uh, the student and family support fund um, that we're mindful of, you know, the needs of, of uh, Crystal Ray students. And if possible, could you send out that information if there's any way that we could help? support um you know our student ricky or others in any way just could you just send that out i don't know what may be possible but i'd just like to see sure left. absolutely thank you so much lorraine for your support and um we will definitely um send that out to the group um as well as the as well as other supervisors and just so you know if there are other people in your office that might be interested in this information this is being recorded and then we'll send that out to um to the rest of you and you can distribute it as as you need to um, but we'll go ahead and get that uh, student and family support information out to you lorraine thank you Right. If there are, um, are any other, oh, you were going to say something. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. Um, hi, my name is Emily and I just had a question uh, in regards to the deferral payment option. I didn't know if you have like a tentative timeline set in place as to when those decisions would need to be um, notified, like sent to you guys, I guess. I just wasn't sure what the thought process was behind that. Um, the thought process is really um, the, the relationship comes first. And so we're gonna do this on a case by case basis. And so we'd wanna kind of talk to you and you know um, see what, what would work best for you and for your, um, for your organization. If we need to defer for three months, for six months, if we need to waive a few months and then you know pick it up later. Um, we really want to uh, just have those as a case by case conversation. So just reach out to me and we can, or if there's somebody else in your office who I need to speak to, just let me know. Okay, yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think ultimately our decision will be based off of what the 
fall semester decision is like. Um, I'm from Georgetown University, so it really kind of depends on what they end up doing. But thank you. No problem. And, and f certainly for an organization like uh, Georgetown, much of, you know, the kind of the framework of that conversation will be had between um, myself, our president, Chris Murphy, and Dr. DeJoya, obviously. Um, and then, um, but, but we do understand that each department operates separately. And so, so there will be kind of a university um, expectation, but then we can work um, particularly the payment pieces out department by department. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Oh, hi, uh, Michelle. Hi, how are you all? Um, this may have already been asked, so I apologize since I had to uh, re enter. Um, how many, maybe percentage or just, um, you know, kind of a, an estimate, how many students do you have who are teleworking with the companies? I know um, I'm from the Archdiocese of Washington Catholic Schools office and um, of course, you know, we were, we, we had four students, but we were concerned about overwhelming them really, um, even as we were getting more used to working from home, we were concerned about really offering any work um, to them because we knew that this was just such a whole new horizon for them. So how many approximately do you have doing telework for companies? Um, Go ahead. It, it, I will just say broadly, and then Lynn can um, frame out the specifics, but I will say broadly, it, it varies. There are some students who are doing traditional telework. They check in at the start time and work a full day, and they do that every work day. And then we do have other students who are working on projects or like an end of year presentation um, so that that telework arrangement looks a little bit different. Um, but Lynn, I'll let you get into more specifics. Mm -hmm. Right now we have between 10 to 15 students that are teleworking um, and, and it goes up now because some supervisors are seeing that, oh, they do have work for them. So they'll just reach out to the placement specialist and let them know that they have specific projects for students. Okay, thank one you. Thing, That's one fine. thing that might be helpful to note is I know we're getting to that time of year where normally our students are getting really anxious about exams and studying for exams. Just so you all know, our students are definitely getting a bit more anxious as the year is wrapping up as they traditionally would, but they will not have end of year exams and end of year assessments. Um, so the, we just didn't feel like that was fair to, to expect students to have an end of course assessment. Um, so, you know, when you talk to your students, they, they shouldn't be talking about end of year um, ex uh, formal exams. Okay, thank you. That's really helpful because I think we may actually reach out for some work. Okay, thank you. I will say, um, yes, our students are a bit stressed out and anxious because this is a new normal, right? And we're all trying things differently. But for many of our students, doing um, corporate work study, you know, doing, oh, these are projects I've been working on at the Catholic school's office, or this is, you know, keeps me in touch with my supervisor. That uh, sense of connectedness and that sense of, oh my gosh, they reached out to me and I'm needed um, is so reaffirming for our students. So, you know, we're all trying to meet that balance of, giving them structure and, and kind of normal um, expectations with trying not to overwhelm them. But please don't hesitate to reach out to students or to anybody on our team about that. Thank you.
Over the course of the next few weeks, and I've already started it with, with many of your organizations, um, speaking to other people in, um, in your organizations, but if there are particular people that you think it would be helpful for me to reach out to, or particular conversations and um, you know, understanding about some of the decisions that your organizations are making for this summer and for next year, um, please don't hesitate to reach out um, as, as those conversations are ongoing. Well, if there's any more questions, we are more than happy to answer them. Um, you can reach us individually. Um, you know, we'd love to hear. I've been speaking back and forth to a couple of you all, and um, just we just want to know that you're okay through this time. Um, thank you for all of your support for us. Um, if there's anything else uh, we can wrap up. Oh, one more thing I want to add. The students are working on presentations and uh, their last presentation is to kind of wrap up the whole year. Um, we will have uh, live presentations with the students. So we'll definitely keep you updated with that. Did you have anything else did you want to add? The, the, I know some of you have asked whether or not you can reach out to, you know, to send well wishes to students, particularly our seniors. Um, we are going to have a portion of our website just dedicated to kind of shout outs and congratulations and support for our um, students, particularly our seniors. Um, and we'll send that um, link and information to you following this. Um, following this i really think you know any way that we can lift each other up in these days all the better um but but certainly be be assured of of our prayers and our um you know goal of of collaborating and and supporting you guys in any way possible where we know this has been a trying time for many of you and well for all of us but um some of us more particularly than uh, than others <laughs>